You. Okay. Okay, Peter. Okay, hello and welcome everybody to this Nordic experience sharing webinar uh, on the use and the promotion of uh, virtual meetings in our Nordic countries. I'm very happy to, uh, to welcome you all to, to this webinar, both uh, our presenters here, and as you can see, we have a lot of them. We have representatives from all Nordic countries. Uh, a fantastic experience of uh, actually sharing the room with the entire Nordic countries here and uh, with our participants uh, from, from different countries uh, all around. Welcome everybody to, uh, to, this, uh, to this webinar here. My name is Peter Anfalk. Uh, I'm the project coordinator of the so-called DigiNord uh, project here. And together with my colleague Pontus Grönvall uh, from Storm and Communication, I will help Peter today. And uh, I usually also work in the REM project in Sweden. Which I'm doing as well. We will talk about that a little bit later on here. Uh, we will, Pontus and I will do our best to try to moderate this, uh, this webinar, this meeting here. Um, and as I said, we are very pleased to, to welcome presenters from, um, from Iceland, from Norway, from Finland, from Denmark, uh, and from the Faroe Island, and from Sweden. I hope I didn't forget uh, some countries uh, here now. Uh, so you see, it's going to be an, an interesting uh, one hour and 45 minutes that we have uh, ahead of us uh, here now. But before we go any further, uh, before we present this, um, the schedule of today, I know that Pontus would like to say a few words uh, about the practicalities. Yes, we are uh, recording this uh, webinar uh, uh, and we want all of your presenters to know that and if you if you think this is okay if you don't think it's okay you need to say that now okay then we have that on record uh, the, the the attendees uh, the ones that are not in picture now you will not be seen in any way in the recording uh, nor will what you write in the chat be seen there and uh, this uh, this uh, recording will be presented after this webinar on uh, the Swedish project REMS homepage. I will in a little while put uh, the link in the, in, in the chat. And talking about the chat, uh, we want you to use that to uh, send questions to, uh, to the presenters. And if you see something in the chat that you know the answer to or, or have something to say about, please join the, the conversation there. And I will try to also see what happens in the chat and, and lift that to to the, to, to the panelists. Uh, and to, to get you started, please write in the chat. The chat function you activate with a small bubble at the bottom of the window. Uh, and, and please write uh, your name, where are you from, uh, what country or where, what city you're sitting in and what organization you are well, representing. To, uh, in, in that way we do two things. We know who you are and we also uh, get you started using the chat. Uh, okay, and uh, when the, Peter will run the webinar, I will help him. Uh, and when we are finished today, we will uh, shut down the recording, uh, say thank you very much, and then we will be here for a few, uh, ten minutes, maybe or after that. Also, if you have some extra discussion that you, that you want to, to let them. Okay, Peter. Yes, uh, and also uh, maybe you would say say why we are recording this. According to the GDPR, we should also say why we are recording this. Okay, we record this so that those who could not participate today can see this uh, afterwards. Yes, excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, so. Back to uh, back to the short introduction here before we uh, listen to the to the presenters here. I would like to sh uh, share with you a uh, short presentation here. I hope you can see my my screen here. Yes. 
Good. So <clears throat> we have a webinar on virtual meetings and climate smart collaboration in the Nordic countries here. And uh, I should tell you that as part of the presidency of the Nordic Council of Ministers in, in 2018, the Swedish Energy Agency got the mission to run the three-year project uh, called Sustainable Nordic Cities with focus on climate smart mobility. And this project involves collaborating and exchanging experiences, which we do today. Uh, and um, with other Nordic countries to create attractive and climate smart uh, urban transport, and not only urban, but uh, in our countries. Uh, and the really challenging or, or really uh, exciting thing here uh, is that um, roughly uh, one and a half month ago, when the Nordic prime ministers met in Reykjavik on August 20th this year, they said that the Nordic countries have the opportunity to take the lead in global climate efforts and are ready to take on this role, just so that we know. This is what our leaders have said. Uh, and their vision for 2030 is that the Nordic region will become the most sustainable and integrated region in the world by promoting green growth in the Nordic region based on knowledge, innovation, mobility, and digital integration and this is what we're talking about to, uh, today so this project the DigiNord project funded by the uh, Nordic Council of Ministers will investigate how virtual meetings and collaboration can help creating climate smart low carbon accessibility <coughs> in a cost efficient way and that's why we meet today here, to listen to these uh, good examples of this. Uh, so today's program is, uh, after this short introduction, we will have presentations from Iceland, Finland, Norway, Denmark, the Faroe Island, and Sweden. And then we will have a short panel discussion uh, following that. And uh, we have presentations from and please excuse me if I don't pronounce it perfectly uh, here for the Nordic names here. Birna Korbrun Gisla Dottir, Thorborg Audur Evar Svens Dottir from the Ministry of Environment and Natural Resources. Can you please wave? Good, thank you. Uh, and then we have Birgitta Steini, Steini Skrimsdottir from the Environment Agency of Iceland. Please speak up and so that we can see you and wave. Uh, that's how it works here. Uh, we have Helena Pulkinen from the Regional State Administrative Agencies in, uh, in Finland. Hi. Hi. <laughs> We have Rune Solmonsen from the Norwegian Environment Agency. Hello. Rune. We have Søren Ulof Garde from the Education Center for the Financial Sector in Denmark. And we have Teitur Solmonsen from the ENS Subsea Tunnel Construction Company on the Faroe Islands. Uh, and from Sweden, we have Ulf Pilrut from the Swedish Transport Administration. Hello, everybody. And uh, then we have Bengt Litorin from the Swedish Environmental Protection Agency. Hello. Hello. Welcome, everybody. We are very happy to have you here. And uh, now we won't take uh, more the precious time of listening to uh, to our presenters, but uh, we would start by uh, inviting our friends from the Ministry of Environment and uh, Natural Resources on Iceland, Audor and Birna. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, good day to you all. Uh, I'm Birna. And I'm going to start. Um, my name is Oyder, just for the record. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the equipment. We have a four-way solution tailor-made for our staff and customers, uh, three of which would be considered a hybrid solution. Uh, this Cisco Paxip solution is used for our largest meeting. 
meeting room that takes uh, about 30 people. We have had it since uh, last spring and the use has been growing steadily. The group that uses it is quite varied. It's used by committees where some members live outside the larger Reykjavik area and uh, have to fly in otherwise. Uh, it also you, we also use it for webinars and uh, meetings uh, where there's a large meeting on site, but some are overseas and not able to come and can use this possibility. Uh, the Polycom sound bar is used in two person meeting rooms, uh, normally used in a situation where one or two attendees are virtual or non virtual meeting. Uh, the Logitech camera is one, uh, we have one located in an eight person meeting room, uh, but the other one is meant for situation where you need to take it outside the ministry. Or, or, or somewhere else in the, in the ministry. Uh, we also have individual webcams for every, every employee. This solution was among the initial steps we took uh, when implementing virtual meetings. This is uh, only used in occasion by a handful of users on one-on-one -on -one meeting, but regularly by a couple. To improve this solution, we added two uh, the Abra Evolve headsets that staff members can book and uh, borrow. Uh, <clears throat> this has uh, some pros and, and cons. We have, uh, overall, we have had a, a positive reaction to all the solutions, but uh, mostly this is for Pepsi since it's very user friendly and has worked well. But uh, as you can see, we have been trying to find all-in-one solution, but uh, I think it's hard to find. Uh, we have not yet implemented a method to measure the use of virtual meeting solution, but this is something we have discussed, and it's a future goal, uh, since it's important to see how much money and emission have been saved, and to boost the project even more. As uh, <clears throat> probably every virtual meeting mastermind knows, it's impossible not to run into any obstacle. And we have had plenty of those. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> most are because we need to, to build capacity among users, but others are technical or, or have to do with ownership of upkeep and, and problem solving. Yeah. So, um, with promotion and training, as Peter said, uh, capacity building is one of our main objectives. When we integrated Office 365 in 2017, we had a few courses taught here within the ministry, and one of those was Skype for Business, and then we had some for teams as well. Uh, these courses were held by external sources, um, and we think they lacked insight into the practical day-to-day -day, uh, subjects that we encounter and, and resources that our staff uh, deals with in real-life situations. Uh, we would prefer that virtual meetings as a whole would develop a clear structural path here within the ministry and ownership as well, reaching both employees as well as the IT department. Um, within all of the ministries as well, not only for us, because we are not an isolated uh, entity. For our future plans, uh, one of the goals of the uh, climate strategy recently adapted in the ministries, uh, it is to reduce emissions from traveling. And one of the key elements is substituting a part of traveling uh, with virtual meetings. Uh, and possibly even more than that, maybe meetings uh, from across town as well. Um, since the Cisco PACSIP solution and system uh, and the other meeting room were virtualized, we have put a lot of focus into preparing user-friendly instructions. And we ourselves have had one uh, uh, crash course for our employees 
and we are planning another one soon because we feel uh, there's a great need for uh, just you know, hands on help. Um, we have offered, of course, help and support at every level, and we think this has, has made uh, quite a significant role playing in, into why this has gone quite well. Um, but we also want to make clear that this knowledge is something that everyone has to be able to do, and, and this knowledge makes them a more valuable employee as well. Uh, and we are convinced that there are, we kind of need, as you refer to, the ministers want to do this, and, and uh, we agree, but we need a clearer top-down demand for staff to master the virtual meeting revolution. Uh, we are already working in an idea into our uh, financial planning aspect of the travelling plan for the Ministry. This would entail a new condition into the new travel plan that would require an explanation uh, for each meeting that requires flying. If it is available by a virtual meeting, uh, you, have to, you have to fill into the uh, form for the travelling plan. You have to fill in uh, if it is possible to take this meeting by a virtual meeting and uh, if, you, if it is not possible, then why not? Um, this would at least give us great information, feedback, into what obstacles we have to deal with in a, in a bigger scope and uh, if this can be revised. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Audur and, and Birna. Very interesting. Uh, we'd like to join your uh, virtual meetings revolution there, I think. Nicely put. <laughs> Uh, excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, could you stop uh, stop your sharing your screen there? Thank you very much. And uh, then we're lucky enough to have uh, another representative from from Iceland, uh, Begitta. Mm -hmm. uh, would you like to take take on the relay stick? Yes. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you, Peter, for organizing this very interesting event here today. I do not have any slides, so it's just me. Uh, my name is Birgitta Stengrimsdottir, and I work as an advisor uh, in the Department of Climate and Green Communities at the Environment Agency of Iceland. And here at the Environment Agency, we use Skype for Business and Polycom for virtual meetings, but we are currently moving over to Teams, so we will abandon Skype soon enough. Uh, we have offices in nine places around Iceland, so I would say that we use virtual meetings uh, a lot in our internal, uh, for our internal meetings. For example, in my team, we have one team member in the north, whereas the rest of the team is located here in the south. So uh, all team meetings, all virtual meetings, where she attends via Skype, and the rest of us sit here together in Reykjavik. Some teams, they do it in a way that everybody just sits at their desk and they all meet on Skype, uh, and they feel that that's more efficient uh, rather than having most of the people sitting together in one room and one or two in a different location. Um, but the Environment Agency participates in international cooperation to a great extent, and uh, international flights are by far our greatest source of greenhouse gas emissions, and there is great will here at the Environment Agency to reduce flights without it compromising our international cooperation. So virtual meetings is something that we are really focusing on now, but I would say that we are starting this journey now regarding the international meetings. Uh, now we have to, for example, like uh, Birtna and Öder described, we have to, uh, when we make our travel plans, we need to state which international meetings have the option of, uh, if there is the option of a virtual meeting, uh, and if we still want to attend physically, we need to justify why, uh, and the CEO needs to give us a go, if we can go or not. Um, I would still say that we lack some sort of a, a framework uh, and more support. Uh, the promotion and training here at the Environment Agency has mainly been in the hands of the computer team. So they've sent out instructions via email and such, and we can always contact them if we need any help. But yeah, we definitely lack a more structured framework for the virtual meetings. Um, and that's where our project, the Green Steps in Government Operations, comes in. 
the Green Steps is a program that we at the Environment Agency oversee, and it's developed for government agencies in Iceland with the overall aim of decreasing negative environmental impacts of the public sector, as well as um, uh, enhancing environmental awareness among public employees. Uh, this program was established in 2014, uh, and like I said, we here at the Environment Agency oversee the program and we assist and guide government agencies in its implementation. Uh, and the Ministry of the Environment and Natural Resources finances the program, so it's free of charge for government agencies to participate. So if I describe this program and what it's all about, uh, participating agencies, they follow five different steps, the green steps, from which the last one includes the implementation of an environmental management system. So each of these five steps uh, includes six different categories. Uh, the categories are electricity and heating, waste sorting and waste reduction, meetings and events, transportation, procurement and communication and management. So, uh, certain actions are required to complete each step. That's basically what the program is about. It's about uh, making the agencies take these actions. And the challenge becomes greater with every step. So, these actions include, for example, reducing energy use and waste, implementing green public procurement, and promoting sustainable transport. So, each step needs to be completed before the next one starts. And when an agency finishes the first step, a representative from us at the Environment Agency carries out an audit uh, before the agency is granted an acknowledgement of completing the first step. And after that, the agency can proceed with the next. Yeah, was there a question? No, uh, oh, it was a okay. time issue. <laughs> okay, I will <laughs> speak very fast. Yeah, so participation in the Green Steps program is optional for uh, government agencies. But according to the government office's climate policy, which was published this year, all government agencies in Iceland must complete the five steps before June 2021. So it's optional, but we are kicking their butt a bit. <laughs> so today we have 73 government agencies in the program. Uh, there are a total of 190 government agencies in Iceland. So that's great. And it's always uh, more and more agencies uh, willing to participate. So we at the Environment Agency see great opportunity in this program to implement a more structured framework for virtual meetings and assist government agencies in implementing it. We have now two actions in the program uh, that refer to virtual meetings, but in my opinion, it's way too wake. And we are currently, um, uh, yeah, we have this makeover of the program these days, so we are implementing uh, virtual meetings to a much greater extent, and we are looking to the REM project, to guidelines created by people and his uh, people, and we really wish to see that within the Green Steps program. Uh, so I look forward to hearing the speakers here today and get inspired so we can all reduce emissions, save time and money, and increase efficiency in our meetings. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much, Birgitta, uh, for a very, very inspiring uh, presentation there. And um, it's an amazing to hear the work that's going on in, uh, in Iceland uh, here. And uh, we're very much looking forward to, to collaborating with you on, on, and discussing and learning from you uh, on this. And you are uh, taking on this systematically, we can hear also, and working with the, with the public sector. Yeah. Uh, Pontus, uh, we have encouraged people to, to ask questions and comment in the chat. How is that going? Uh, not so good. <laughs> if you, if you, they are using the chat, but they haven't sent any questions. But that is not so bad now because we're a little bit behind schedule. So uh, we, we look forward to, to, uh, to questions and comments in the chat. Please use that. Peter? Well, uh, well, th uh, thank you, thank you very much. How is the how is the use? Well, uh, one question to you: uh, How is the use uh, in the um, in your in your environmental agency? Uh, is that in, uh, increasing? Do you see an increased use of that and uh, uh, the awareness and the like the meeting culture? Is that developing? Do you see? Yeah, it is developing definitely. But I see there's a difference between teams. I would say that the culture is different because we have these teams, the agency, there's a different culture within each team. Some teams are much more uh, focusing on the virtual meetings where others are not. So like Birtna and others said, we, we need more top-down uh, guidance. And that's where, of course, the green steps come in. And uh, yeah, so mm. I feel that there's some movement going on 
at the moment and everyone mm. is willing to do something but maybe people just lack how should i go about you know so Excellent. yeah Excellent. I uh, I feel Pontus breathing down my neck when it comes to the time issue. So uh, <laughs> thank you very much, uh, both Finnish presenters. Uh, now we will uh, swiftly move on to uh, and go east from the extreme west. We will go to extreme east <laughs> to Finland to Helena Pulkinen. Thank you. And I hope you can see my show. So, hi all, nice to be with you today. My name is Helena Pulkinen and I work as a project planner in the regional state administrative agencies of Finland. I'll just refer to my organization as an agency from now on so that I don't spend my six minutes <laughs> telling that horrible long <laughs> name of our organization. Anyway, um, what we do in our agency, we promote regional equality by carrying out executive steering and supervisory tasks laid down in the law. Uh, we have quite varied areas of responsibilities, as you can see from there. Uh, we have six different um, regional state administrative agencies. They are all independent agencies, but uh, the division where I work is uh, uh, organized on a national scale. So I'm working in the administrative and development services division. And our personnel is located in all of the six agencies. Um, my most northern colleague is in Rovaniemi in Lapland and my most southern colleague is sitting in Vasa and uh, as you can imagine we truly do not meet face to face on a weekly basis or even on a monthly basis and our division is um, is in a key position when it comes to virtual meetings because we take care of the uh, software because we have the IT under our division, uh, we take care of the practices and more, and we also take care of the training of any software that we use in these agencies. And uh, every agency worker has Sky for Business. Uh, it's part of our MS Office package, and. Um, like uh, in uh, Iceland, we are also moving um, to use MS Teams in the near future. Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, we all have headsets and uh, cameras and all that available for every worker. And, um, <clears throat> and also um, we use a virtual virtual software not only on these traditional meetings but we have quite many webinars and we do our training and teamwork and collaboration via skype so this is really um, software that we use on a daily basis uh, we've uh, offered short and easy access sessions training sessions for beginners and for advanced users on Skype. And there are also Moodle courses available on Skype and on Teams. So I think we got the uh, training part pretty well covered. And um, in addition to the training, uh, we have discovered that uh, personnel needs to know a couple of friendly faces. Some, some people that they can ask even the silly questions about how to use Skype, how to use my webcam. So we, we have our IT um, support outsourced, but within our organization, there are people like me who can answer those small questions and really help the personnel to get to know Skype and, and to be brave about using it. Well, our need to cooperate on a national level on a daily basis will not uh, decrease. So we will be continuing <laughs> to using these virtual meeting softwares in the future as much as we use it today. Like I said, it's, it's, uh, it's not even a thing here uh, because we have to do national 
uh, cooperation uh, on projects and we are doing service design and even though there are six independent agencies uh, we do that national cooperation on those things so virtual meetings is um, how do I say everyday thing for us And that's my very short presentation, but I hope you have a couple of questions for me. Thank you very much, Helena. Um, <clears throat> it's uh, it's good to see that you're supporting the uh, the users of uh, of virtual meetings uh, there in Finland. Uh, would, would be um, is that a that's publicly publicly funded. Uh, the, the work that you're doing is that something that the the material that you're using is that something that you would be able to sh to share with others as well or how does that yeah, work yeah yeah of course they're all in Finnish but naturally yes and we we try to actually I was the one that designed the Skype courses for beginners and for advanced users and really tried to think from our personal point of view not from the technical point of view because you don't really want to make it too technical you mm. want to make it seem like it's easy that it's something that you can experiment with you can even play with it you don't have to be an expert on skype to use it effect effectively mm. so just really trying to mend the uh, mindset of mm. using this software it's very much of a mindset and a culture and routine yeah. uh, uh, i guess um, how about the we have two um uh, Two presenters now so far that have uh, talked about going over from uh, Skype for Business to to Teams. Uh, when is that taking place, and uh, are there any discussions uh, regarding this transfer? Uh, in our organization, the timeline is not clear. I think somewhere during next year, and we have to plan it very carefully because Teams is a is more than just a virtual meeting software. It's much more, it really enables virtual collaboration on a different level. And I think it's great that we're moving from Skype to Teams on that sense. But of course, it's another software. It looks different and, uh, and we have to uh, organize these really easy access trainings on Teams and, and really support our personnel and encourage, encourage them to use it. Hmm. Yeah, I think we we have the same challenge in in all our countries here. So I think they, we we have a an arena for collaboration here uh, and a need for, need for that. Uh, we can take that up in the discussion later on. Uh, Pontus, thank you very much, Elena. Uh, Pontus, you. any uh, any input from the chat? Yes, I, I was waving my hand before to encourage using the chat for questions. I was a little afraid that I scared you off before, uh, but uh, <laughs> that was not the case. We have a couple of questions. Uh, we have one from uh, Penti Kis uh, Kiskinen, project manager from Finnish Customs, who asks uh, all panelists, but uh, maybe we start with Helena here. Uh, how do you support virtual meetings in your office with facilities management and office spaces? Uh, that's a good question because we have like 26 or was it 27 offices all around Finland and of course some offices are traditional offices where you have your own room where it's really easy on a, a facility point of view to have these Skype meetings but then there are those open mm -hmm. space offices where you have to have different kind of zones or rooms where you can freely discuss things over Skype so that your co-workers don't get disturbed. But that's a question that uh, in Finland we have this Senati uh, Kintestit, uh, I don't know which is in English, but um, an agency that is really looking into this um, open space office solutions and they are also thinking and are very aware of the fact that we are using virtual meeting meetings more and more not only in our agency but other agencies and ministries as well uh, there is another question from uh, Malin Lövlin, project assistant at the uh, Digi Nord uh, what would you say is the most important part in changing the attitude about virtual meetings is it big training courses or small 
dumb or stupid or silly questions <laughs> uh, that are most important. Should I answer that? I, 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 I think the easy access um, courses, not too long. Mine were 30 minutes and 30 minutes. And then afterwards, just be available for those dumb questions, although there are no dumb questions. Yes, I agree with that. And if I could choose from a personal level, I would say uh, helping out with the small questions and the daily basis use of it. Start getting people comfortable in using it. And when you start to get comfortable, uh, then you start using it and you get good at it. So that's maybe the first way to go, I would say. I don't know if you agree. Let's okay. let's dis uh, let's discuss this on a. Uh, we have a few minutes uh, at the end of the session, and we that's a big question actually. So we can continue it's that. A good question. Uh, that uh, that uh, later on. Thank uh, thank you very much, Molly, for that. Uh, thank you very much, Helena, for that presentation. Uh, we do have a tight schedule today, so we will move on. And uh, now we go west. We skip Sweden and yeah, jump all the way into Norway. Here, uh, Rune, welcome. Hello, my name is uh, Rune Samuelsen. I'm working for the Norwegian Environment Agency. Uh, I have uh, make a little presentation here. You see that? Yes, I hope, see that. I hope you see that. Uh, is uh, okay. Uh, we have a travel policy uh, in our company. We have two main offices. We have one in Trondheim and we have one in Oslo. And we, we talk about uh, traveling. Oh, oh, sorry, I go a bit faster. Uh, we are having a traveling policy that says we should not travel so often. We can take the night train from Trondheim to Oslo and uh, we try to travel not so much but and we have uh, the reason that we have a lot of office uh, that can have a web webinar and meetings we have a, I hope over, uh, over there we have 40 meeting rooms in, in uh, 20 in each town they are using a lot uh, we are using uh, Skype for Business. Uh, I do that. Uh, we are using Skype for Business, and all our employees is using Skype for Business at their office. And they have uh, webcams, they have microphone and headsets. And we have integrated this uh, solution with cell phones and Skype for Business. They are linking together. So we have better interaction between the cell phones and Outlook and Skype Business. So you can do everything from your phone. Collaboration across the series. Uh, we are using uh, Skype Business as uh, video conferencing systems. It's uh, integrated with Outlook that you can. Uh, make meetings there and go to the meeting room and take the meeting with your Skype business uh, links. So you prefer it. So, and we, why we uh, have a Skype business is that we can uh, work together and we can share every programs from the office and we can share a screen and we can work together. Uh, we can, uh, we can, uh, show each other how it works and so they can uh, look better in this uh, they can look better from uh, each from Trondheim and also what we're doing in the meeting room so i i don't have a very long presentation but uh, we, i say we have 900 people and employees and we, in norway we have a lot of small office Every day we have uh, contact with them with on the Skype business. So we have a, a big environment uh, for Skype business, and uh, we have uh, several rooms that is bigger for a webinar. So every meetings is 
one in Oslo and in Trondheim, so it can uh, uh, practice it for both sides. We don't need to travel between the city. We can, when the director is having something to say, she can have all meetings. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, to see. Thank, you. thank, thank you, Luna. That's quite quite interesting. Would you mind uh, stop sharing your yes. presentation? There? Yeah. That's good. Well, Norway uh, has uh, has been a leading star for for long when it comes to video conferencing. Uh, also with the with the Tanda Corporation here and uh, brought really high quality um, video conferencing to the world and being bought by Cisco uh, later on incorporated in in Cisco. So I guess. You've had a, a, a long tradition of, of developing a good uh, virtual meeting culture, also having enormous distances in in, uh, in your in your long country. So I think you have had good prerequisites to to develop that. Do do you have any uh, like uh, from <clears throat> you you were talking about that you, you you give the opportunity to to work from at home with with mobile devices and so on. Uh, do you also have some kind of policy for people uh, so that you uh, are people allowed to do it uh, to to work from from a distance and and from from your home yeah uh, every computer is uh, and cell phone have a software installed that protect the uh, client and uh, if uh, some traveling a longer distance uh, in the east uh, in Europe, they have to take the, a new computer with them, so that when they're coming back, they they give the computer back to to us. So in the IT department, so we can reinstall it because they have to, to be clean before it is come back into the, our network. But we have a make a solution that is uh, we can work everywhere. So because we have secured the computers so you can work on, on uh, uh, wireless environment everywhere hmm. so that's no problem for us so maybe i, I, I can give that uh, we we can bring that up uh, a little bit later on and hear how uh, what the policies are in in other uh, countries as well mm -hmm. Uh, that's quite interesting. You're quite uh, advanced in Norway when it comes to technical possibilities there for uh, for virtual meetings. Interesting to hear. Uh, any other questions, Pontus, that we have? Uh, no, no more questions from the chat. So you made it perfectly clear. Uh, nothing ambiguous there, Hulna. So good. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that was the Norwegian story. Uh, then we move on uh, going south to uh, to the old joint kingdom, uh, Norwegian uh, Danish kingdom here. We're going down to Denmark uh, here. Uh, welcome Denmark. Can we have your votes from the jury? No, I don't hear you. So. So maybe you should, if you speak up, so on. I'm trying to. There we go. Yeah. You got me now. Uh, yes. We got you now. Yes. Great. <laughs> okay. Great. I was unmuted, so I don't know what what has happened. But here I am from Denmark, and and distance in Denmark is not a problem. <laughs> so we need to find. So I have another approach. Uh, than the new other from uh, different uh, ministries. And I'm working in uh, the finance sector's Udense Center. And in, uh, Dani in, in, in English, it is the Danish Banking Academy. And we are providing training and consulting services to the financial sector in, in Denmark. So we have a lot of uh, physical uh, classes. Uh, we have our own conference center in uh, Yulan, uh, Skanderborg, and we are traveling around uh, whole Denmark, uh, facilitating uh, classes, meetings. Um, so we have a lot of traveling. 
Um, but still, um, we have we have a, a big catalog of uh, e-learning, so our uh, participants can train at home, 24/7. They have access to um, yeah different e-learning classes, and then we have um, and we are improving our webinars. Speaking of which. Uh, we are in our sector using primarily uh, three platforms for, for these virtual meetings. And the first I will mention is our Adobe Connect, which we use for uh, education uh, of our participants. A typical uh, 100 plus participant each, each uh, class. We're working uh, flipped, which means that um, we're working with a flipped classroom, which means that uh, our participants are prepared for the classes at home. And uh, that includes also these uh, virtual meetings before entering the physical uh, class. These, uh, these virtual classes can last from one hour to whole day classes uh, while uh, our participants are sitting at home or at their desk uh, in the bank. Typical classes with, with these uh, financial uh, subjects. Uh, and I, I don't know if you can see in, in the right corner now, but, but we are using uh, different uh, instruments for um, like uh, having our participants being a part of the meeting for having them to, to, to be motivated. And we're using, uh, first of all, um, a quiz system called Socrative and uh, Mentimeter, which, is, which has a lot of different options, but I usually use it for um, uh, word skies, word clouds. So, so Adobe Connect is we are we are primarily using for for education, bigger webinars. Yes, then we are also using in as in uh, Ireland, uh, we are using Cisco uh, video conference, and yeah, it's primarily yeah we we are limited to only have this offered in in two locations in our office. Um, and it's primarily used for uh, our board meeting with uh, other boards. Uh, it could also be a meeting with uh, me as a consultant to uh, the human resources in a bank or like for sales meetings. Um, so this is used uh, quite often. But as Rune just were about, um, we also uh, using the Skype of business on it, yeah, actually the whole time. We're using this very, very often, both in our department, but also in the financial sector, but primarily for intern use. So short messages to longer meetings uh, internal. So what we have done is we have done this um, classes in uh, digital uh, communication where we are um, training in Skype of business. And we have uh, at the moment trained for like 3,200 employees in the financial uh, sector. Um, and as I as I said, the, the the transport in Denmark is not that is not that big a problem. So so we need to to um, to have another focus. And it's more like efficiency and for like uh, uh, availability with a, with a, with a customer uh, perspective. Um, so, when I was asked um, to to share my exp my experience with the virtual meeting, I will instead share my experience with implementing this Skype of business in the different uh, institutes in in the financial sector in Denmark, uh, which is um, quite exciting. Um, so my experience is. Um, after I after have done a training, after I've done a, a class in Skype of Business or in digital communication, do it, just do it. Hold the first meeting and get your own experience, uh, just like uh, Pontus were, uh, said earlier. Another uh, important uh, point is why are we doing this? So, so you mentioned uh, earlier about this uh, top-down uh, communication. So, so 
yeah, the board or the strategic strategic leaders might, might um, um, communicate why are we doing this? Why should we offer this to our clients, to our customers? Yeah, actually promote it. Also, um, as always, the leader involvement is very important in this being a success. So, so we need the leaders to go in front and use them ourselves and, and use it themselves before uh, having the empl employees to use it. Um, and of course, the, the technique part is, is um, very, very important because if you had a bit bad experience the first time, then you are not motivated for, uh, for another try. So make the technique work. Yeah. Last, uh, our experience is also that the customers, they are ready. And, and when I'm speaking on, of uh, customers, I'm, I'm meaning uh, the, the, the normal bank, bank clients. Uh, they are ready for, for, for these type of meetings. They just don't know that the banks are offering it. So that's a big uh, task for, for, for the advisors and for the employees to, to, uh, to communicate about. So, yeah, I guess that's my experience that our systems and, and platforms, and we are very excited about working with this and our plans are for the future to be even better. We will have, yeah, our goal is to have the whole financial sector using and offering um, virtual meetings uh, for the clients. Yes, so that was my words. So I don't know if you have any questions. On second, you, you, you kept uh, the time. Very, very good. Uh, I, yeah, there, there is a question or a couple of questions and there was one question that I missed uh, yeah. to, uh, to, uh, to Rune, but uh, we'll start with the question that arrived when you were speaking. There, was, there is a question from um, uh, Penti Kiskinen, project manager from Finnish Customs, uh, and it's a it's a general question. Maybe we should save this for the panel panel discussion, but I'll take it anyway. Uh, do any of the participants use higher security video conferencing products? If used, what kind of solutions do you have? Do you want to answer that now, or do we want to keep that for the for the discussion later? I think we will keep that for for the discussion part, because our yeah we, we are we are we are holding these meetings. We are training our clients in holding these meetings with the normal bank customers, so that we don't have those type of issues. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there's a, a long question from. Uh, Emily here, uh, I believe that most people agree on the benefits of virtual meetings and are pleased that they do, don't need to travel as much as they used to. Also being able to work from home or anywhere and still uh, uh, attend meetings, contribute to the flexibility for people, blah, blah, and so on. Uh, I'm looking for a question, but I think this is more a comment. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, uh, how did you promote Skype to the financial sector? Do you think that the promotion could be done in a governmental organization, for example? Mm. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I guess I guess not, because uh, each bank in Denmark has uh, different um, strategies. Some banks uh, are only offering physical meetings, so they choose not to yeah, offer virtual meetings, and and that's a strategy. So so um, it's not the right strategy if you ask me, but but still it's a strategy, and I think that should be, yeah, that should be an option for for each bank to to make their own strategy. And okay. um, yeah. Uh, before I end the chat questions here, I would like to go back to uh, Rune, Rune uh, and there was a question. Uh, have you noticed any difference in the amount of travel use of virtual meetings, travel and use of virtual meetings af after implementing the travel policy? The question is from Marlin Lövrim from Dirk Inord. Yeah, uh, yes, of course, we have, uh, because we have so many 
meeting rooms with uh, uh, equipment. So, of course, the traveling is going down between the cities, so we can have much more meeting uh, across the uh, across the towns, of course. So, yeah, I think uh, we can document that. Okay, Peter. Well, that's good. That's good. Uh, it, <clears throat> it's good if we can uh, kind of document the um, the use of virtual meetings and uh, and also uh, if we can see any impact on on uh, one the business travel uh, if we use it for for business meetings, but also uh, as uh, several of you have have mentioned that you can uh, use it for. Uh, to reduce commute travel. That's actually a bigger part of our, our, of our traveling mix and CO2 emissions is actually our commuting. So if it could um, uh, support uh, telework as well, that, that's, uh, that's another option uh, here, which is interesting to, to look into, but a more complex issue here. Uh, a, a question for you, uh, Sarah, and uh, it's quite interesting what you do and impressive figures on, on the amount of people that you've been training here. Uh, and, um, and also the, um, the success factors, once you've done the training on what actually needs to be in place, top management commitment, etc., cetera, um, to, to actually uh, develop the digital meeting culture and, and the practice of it. Are you having kind of an extended customer responsibility? Or are you taking on, are you following up your, your training? Uh, after, after you've given the training, are you supporting the organizations in that kind of uh, developing that routines and practice? We are, yes. Of course, we are interested in how our customers are succeeding in uh, offering the customers, their customers, uh, these, uh, these virtual meetings. Um, so, so we are supporting them and we are helping them with uh, succeeding and we are lately we have offered a new class new type of class uh, a second level actually for them making um, their their employees train another time um, so so yeah that that's it or, or yeah i guess that's my answer hmm. Well, thanks. I think we need to <clears throat> start working at the, the Danish bank to take part of your training session there. So it would be quite interesting. So, so we have an uh, employment opportunity. Thank you very much, Søren. Um, Thank you. We, uh, we will move on uh, now from, um, from Denmark uh, out into the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, and uh, we are going to the, uh, to the Feather Islands and to uh, Tato Sommerson. Uh, how are you? Fine, thank you. I'll just share the presentation. While you're doing that, I was thinking about the cell and said you, you have you have no problem of distances within the country. I think that uh, the Faroe Islands has uh, even less with that. But they do have some obstacles in between the islands, I would guess. Yeah, I think I think you need some tunnels actually. Yes. Here we are. Can you see the presentation? Yes, we see why virtual yeah. meetings. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, my name is Tadjo Samson and I'm uh, CEO of uh, this project in the Faroe Islands to construct two uh, subsea tunnels between the islands. Uh, I, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the Faroe Islands because I guess you don't know details very much about the Faroe Islands. It is uh, 18 islands located in the middle of the North Atlantic. We are around 52,000 uh, inhabitants here. Uh, in the Faroe Islands uh, with our own uh, language and culture, but we are part of the Danish Kingdom. Uh, the Faroe Islands are not part of the EU, and the main industries in the Faroe Islands are fishery, fish farming, offshore service, and tourism. Uh, this project, which I am working with, 
uh, is to construct two uh, big, uh, internationally big uh, subsea tunnels. Uh, one is called the Estra Tunnel, which is 11.3 meters long, and the other one, the Sandai Tunnel, which is uh, 10.8 kilometers long. And the total uh, project investments is uh, 360 million euros. So if you compare that to Sweden, it is a project of around, uh, uh, yeah, it's around 500 million. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's a, I don't have the figure, but it's uh, very big. If you compare it to Denmark, you shall uh, multiply with uh, 100, for instance. Uh, yeah, here's just how it uh, looks like. It goes uh, to, it, it's connecting the islands. We have uh, in the Faroe Islands two subsea tunnels uh, before this project. Now we add with two another, so we link the islands together. Uh, we have a small organization within the project. We are only uh, two employees within the project, me and the project manager. Then we have hired all other people in. So, um, and um, the different uh, peoples, uh, the lenders who finance the project, they have an advisor. There's a control engineers that we have hired in, geologists we also hire in, uh, designers, uh, which are from Norway uh, for the tunnels, also hired in, and designers for the roads connected with the tunnels also hired in, and so on. And uh, we have people, it's an international organization with have, which has uh, Faroese people, Icelanders, uh, Norwegians, English, and so on. Uh, we didn't actually plan to have uh, virtual meetings within the project, but uh, uh, when we started up, we saw that we had to travel a lot. So we had to be, for instance, in Norway uh, every second week. And as the Faroe Islands doesn't have um, direct flights to Norway or to Oslo uh, every day, we have to travel via Denmark, which means that we will use one day traveling to Norway and then have a meeting of maybe two hours and then traveling back. So we will lose a lot of uh, time uh, doing this. And uh, so therefore we, we um, decided to, to purchase uh, a Cisco system, which we uh, have been used since uh, 2016. So we have saved a lot of, of time uh, by using this. Uh, the Cisco system, we have two, uh, uh, two screens. So one for the participants, where we see the participants, and when, uh, one where we have uh, presentations or material that we are discussing on the meeting, drawings, and so on. Um, and then we have a microphone on the table and it has worked uh, very well. Uh, we had some technical training from our provider, provider of the system in the beginning, but otherwise it has worked fine. Uh, but there were some uh, issues with regards to firewalls uh, at other organizations. When using this system, it couldn't access the firewall and so on. So I would say that the first time when you use the system, uh, you have to be patient. But of course, when people are getting more and more uh, learned to use the system and it's more and more used, then it will be less uh, complicated. Uh, our experience is also that it's good that you, especially if you are doing negotiations and things like that, that you have met people before fiscally, before you uh, use the meeting. But uh, that might change over time when people are getting more experienced with uh, using these uh, systems. Uh, yeah, the advantages was uh, are different during the project, especially under the planning, because the planning for the, the, the tunnel where we designed it, it lasted for maybe a year, year and a half or something like that. We could execute the project much faster because we saved so much time. Uh, instead of traveling to, to especially to Norway. And uh, also we saved a lot of money because we have had to travel to uh, Norway every second week with our ferries, advisors, and uh, so on. 
and a travel to Norway, including the advisors, even if it's only two days, it costs maybe around 100,000 kroner every second week. <laughs> so we have saved uh, millions, I guess, uh, by using this. And of course, then there's the environmental issues issue, which we didn't think very much of uh, back in 2016, I think. But of course, it's more focused on that today by reducing uh, flights and so on. And then, of course, you have more uh, time with your family when you are not traveling that much, which I think is uh, also important for the people on the project. Uh, during the construction, which just started in 2017, it has been much e easier to have uh, project meetings where we have follow up on, on different issues, especially technical issues uh, under the construction, if there is uh, to clear out misunderstandings and, and things like that. And it's possible to call in with, uh, on meetings with short notice instead of having advisors coming to the pharaohs or us traveling abroad. So that has um, uh, also reduced us for a lot of costs. Yeah, I think uh, that's mainly that, uh, what I, I have. Good time timekeeping. We appreciate yes. that. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so Pontus, thank you very much, Tater. <clears throat> uh, quite interesting. What? Uh, that's a major project that you that yes. do, and that must be one of the biggest projects that you're <coughs> conducting in the Faroe Islands. Yes, yes, that's the biggest project ever. Amazing. Uh, when are you drilling a tunnel to um, to Norway or to Sweden? Yeah, that's too long distance, I guess. That's that's the next step. Okay. <laughs> Interesting to see the the, uh, the payback there. How about uh, do we have any uh, questions from the chat? I should first uh, ask. Uh, no questions from the chat, but it's it was I think it was very nice to see <clears throat> so contained the the uh, in in a special project that you can show all the benefits from uh, from using virtual meetings in a very pedagogic <clears throat> or way. Mm. So that's good. Yes, definitely. Um, uh, in addition to the Cisco system, are you using any other um, softwares for for cal like Skype for business or Skype or uh, also? Uh, no, we have mainly used this uh, system because it has worked very good. Mm -hmm. And the, and the uh, I can't really remember. Maybe the quality was better at that time when we started to use it as well. And people were yeah. So we have used that uh, mainly, and also because. Um, we are uh, many people uh, participating, or not many, but uh, maybe six, eight people participating. So we have the system in our meeting room. Mm. So we are sitting together here in the Faroes uh, on the project, and the advisors are, are sitting different places, for instance, in Norway. So Oslo okay. and Trent time and, and so on. Mm. Uh, Tato, could you just stop sharing the, your screen? Yeah. So uh, and how has that how has it been received by your um, collaborating partners uh, in different countries and organizations? Um, have they um, uh, has it been a positive experience also for them, or have they complained? No, it has been a, an, uh, it has been very positive. I think uh, some of the advisors didn't use this. Uh, virtual meetings when we started on the project and i think it has been a very good experience for them as well good pointers uh, you use this within this special project but it will be finished even if it takes a while to build tunnels uh, do you think that this uh, way of working will spread out in the, from this project uh, to other other areas yeah i guess definitely yes i think it's a very uh, it's very useful when you are sitting here in the middle of the Atlantic because uh, ferries are traveling a lot for to other countries for meetings and, and so on. Mm. Have have you uh, run across any other examples of um, of organizations in the Faroe Islands being that remote as you are that that are using uh, virtual collaboration, virtual meetings? Uh, yes, I think many organizations here have it. I, I know, for instance, the hospitals uh, in the Faroe Islands, there are three hospitals. They are working together, uh, using it very much. And also, um, 
uh, to the hospitals in Denmark where they buy special services. They use it a lot. So it's used, uh, it's used lot, and it will be used uh, used uh, even more in the future, definitely. Excellent. Thank you very much, Tato. Uh, very interesting to to hear, and good luck both with the virtual uh, meetings and with the uh, drilling of tunnels uh, there. When when will you, you be ready? Uh, the first one will open uh, next year in December, and the second one in twenty three. Please take us on a virtual tour then. Uh, we'll do, that. do that. Thank, thank you very much. Okay, so now we move on uh, to our last <clears throat> uh, but not least set of presentations here from uh, from our Swedish friends here. Um, we have uh, Ulf Pilrud and Bengt Litterin. So uh, I invite you first, uh, Ulf, to present. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much for that. Hope you can see my presentation. Yes, I, I can see it. <clears throat> yes, uh, first of all, uh, it's been very inspiring to listen to all these stories, and I hope I can add some inspiration as well. Uh, my name is Wolf Pilrut, and I'm a the project manager for, for the REM project, virtual meetings in Swedish public agencies. And uh, first of all, uh, background a little bit what happened, what has led to this present situation. We had a, a rather small project in the be beginning of this century. It was actually beginning with a meeting between Peter Arnfalk and myself, <laughs> I would say, in, in a way. And uh, then we discussed how to develop a, a method. <clears throat> and we, so we did. It, and it was built upon examples from private and, and public sectors and from the research science at that time. And uh, we created the 10 step method. I will come back to that. Uh, the first year is uh, 2006 to 2009. And uh, here I've written, as you can see, the volcano eruption in Iceland. I'm sure everyone remembers that. And I wrote it because it pushed our project in a very positive direction, it's a bit, uh, uh, paradoxal, but uh, it did because uh, when all the planes were grounded for a number of weeks, it was uh, uh, highlighted our project in, in certain ways. We had a lot of telephone phone calls and uh, questions from different organizations how to cope with this very uh, strange situation. Mm. So thank you, Iceland. Uh, more, more important, perhaps, uh, was uh, the Swedish Green IT Agenda in July 2010, and it was uh, the, the Ministry of Enterprise from in Sweden that uh, wrote it, and there is three parts. One part is about uh, virtual meetings, and since we had done this work with the 10-step method, we got uh, the, the task in, in uh, Swedish transport administration. So that's how it started. One thing gives another all the time. And this is uh, the backbone of our work, I would say. You can only see two pages of it, but it's those 10 steps and I can't, uh, and I won't uh, talk about all of them right now, but as an example, you can see number one, analyze the situation right now. What, what's, what, what we start with. Second, Anchor the, the this project plan with a manager management. That's very important, and there is a number of advices and and uh, success success factors and so on. Uh, I will come back to it again. So in the beginning of this project, we got uh, twenty agencies. You can see them all here, and uh, you can note the governmental office in the middle here. That's very important in this situation. And you can also notice the picture, it's a photo. And I would like to stress that we are not working with banning all physical meetings. We're trying to, to optimize virtual meetings and this way make people make good choices to be, be pragmatic, the physical meeting or virtual meeting in good basis. And if you choose a, a virtual meeting, you should do it uh, optimized, of course. 
And as you can see in this picture, it's made just because you should see the, the amount of it. We got, uh, after a couple of years, uh, another 67. So now we have about 80, a little bit more than 80 agencies to work with. And the reason to this uh, increased number of, uh, of uh, agencies is this uh, result, because we could see uh, after just a few years, and that's very rare in these circumstances, working with, with uh, environmental and sustainable issues, as most of you are aware, I suppose. We could see that uh, uh, there were a decrease of uh, emissions of CO2 uh, in around 25% from our authorities, uh, agencies, uh, compared to about six if in, in the other. That's why we got all these new agencies. Finally, what are we doing? What's the, the daily work? We have, as I said, about 80 agencies and we are trying to disseminate uh, results from all these because there's so much good work done in so many agencies and shouldn't invent the wheel all the time. So we, this one of our major tasks to, to spread information through all these networks. We have different kind of networks. There is, for instance, uh, the technical networks network. We have uh, webinars. We also have, have a so, sort of open space webinars where we just uh, just to invite a certain time and then the name of it is the ask rem and then you can then you can uh, discuss whatever that's uh, has been a very it's a very good thing to to attend as well we are helping the agencies with following up and reporting another of our main tasks i would say and we are coaching in line with this 10-step uh, method and we're trying to do it as, as, as individually, individually uh, adapted as possible because we have, we have agencies with thousands of employees and in some cases there are perhaps a couple of hundreds. So it's quite different and it's, it's very important to adapt to who you're talking to. And all this is coordinated, as I said in the beginning and you saw at the first sign, by the Swedish Transport Administration. And this is only six minutes, as, as you know, but there is a possibility to see uh, this home page. There is a summary in English, and you can see all these 10 steps in English as well. And now, really, finally, uh, I would like to mention that uh, we are discussing now in, in the Swedish Transport Administration to talk about the digital accessibility accessibility because we have a tradition a very strong tradition of course to talk about mobility and now perhaps we could put a link together with roads railroad shipping and aviation and then you have a more profound uh, impact of uh, the, the sustainable development development i would say it's a, a very a nice thought uh, well, that's what I had to say, and uh, as usual, I, uh, when we have a very short of time, do it very quick. So, do I have extra time, Pontus, or is it in on schedule? <laughs> <laughs> thank you very, thank you very much, Ulf. Uh, we will have some time to to raise questions uh, afterwards. Uh, thank you very much for that presentation. Uh, and now we uh, move on. We actually have two presenters from Sweden. So we will we'll take some questions after uh, the second presentation, Is that if that is okay with you, uh, Ulf. Absolutely. And I would like to invite Bengt Litterin uh, from the Swedish Environmental Protection Agency. Thank you. Working a lot with this. So. Yes. Uh, so you see my presentation now? Yes. Okay, good. Um, yes, my name is Bengt Litterin. I work for the Environmental Protection Agency in Sweden. Uh, I have been working with virtual collaboration since early 2000. Uh, and actually, I actually wrote the, the, the plan for the Ministry of Enterprise and Innovation 
that uh, Ulf talked about uh, earlier, the ones about, about the virtual meetings, IT for a green environment, the management. Um, so what, what we are doing in my agency, um, we have a, almost, almost all meetings today are a, a possibility to have virtual. Um, all meeting rooms are equipped with, with uh, equipment for, for virtual meetings. Uh, so very often someone is, is participating online. Um, we do project meetings, uh, simple meetings. Uh, we do webinars. Uh, actually have done that for, for at least 10 years and very much it was a start for our use of virtual meetings. Uh, also say a way to promote uh, the meetings um, we had we have the the responsibility to to inform our region regional agencies about new legislation about the environment and this was done before by having seminars spread out in the countries we had a tour around the country and had seminars and they could attend on a, on a few places around Sweden. This was, of course, expensive and time consuming for us and also for the regional agencies, of course. Um, and uh, then we started to do webinars and we had a lot of gains from that. Uh, one was, of course, economic and time and, and time. We didn't travel as much, um, but also communicatively it was a gain because before they send one participant that had to inform all the others but now all the ones responsible for the legislation in the regional office um, agency um, were able to get the information from the source and this took them one or two hours perhaps instead of a whole day if they included the travel. So this was a great success and we, we do it a lot today, even increasingly so. We do it in other, other projects as well when we need to inform um, uh, the other participants in the project. Uh, we're starting doing workshops as well. I don't think that there's very much limits uh, in virtual meeting. The limits are in our um, uh, the, the person participating. It's like when you got your driver's license, you, you started by not driving to another city, rather driving up in the flower bed besides because you weren't able to handle the technology and your focus was not on where to go, but rather the steering wheels and, and all of that. So it took some time for you to learn how to handle the car in a way that you didn't need to think about technology and it's the same thing here when you are uh, secure in your use of technology uh, the meeting technology you don't need to think about it and you can focus on the content that is the important thing for the virtual meetings so uh, workshops is something that we're working with but of course need to develop to to be more effective uh, um, blended meetings, meetings where you have people in the room and also people participating online is perhaps the most common meeting we have, um, but also the most difficult. The best meeting is as we do, do it now. Everyone is alone and in, in the, uh, on a distance because they're creating an equality in the meeting uh, process. And we do webcasts. If we count that into to virtual meetings, we do almost all our larger conferences, physical conferences, we do webcasts from. And they are not um, really uh, including in that way that you communicate with the part participants online, but it's a way to make it available for persons that were not able to be on the physical conference, uh, a lot of lectures and so on. We work with Skype for Business. 
our main uh, tool. We are looking at teams for the moment, but we haven't started the pro process. There's, it has an ending time for Skype for Business to, I think Microsoft had said, July uh, 21. So we have almost two years, but I think as have been mentioned before, this is a more complicated project than just having a new virtual meeting tool because it's a more of a collaboration tool. So I think actually we will need the two years. Um, uh, but for the moment, Skype for Business is our main main tool. We do a video conference with PEXIP, PEXIP. Uh, and we're looking at the possibilities of maybe stop that because the problems I see today with the virtual meeting is that we, we are have, having a complicated meeting environment. And today it's confusing with the two systems. So. I think we will manage with Skype for Business uh, and perhaps have a few virtual PEXIP rooms, but no video conference. So we should have all meetings should look the same from the user's perspective. Um, we do uh, use Adobe Connect. Uh, we use that for webinars uh, when we started them today. Uh, and then we also had a meeting host helping uh, the one that was doing the webinar uh, today, I think our our people have been become more more um, used to this, and we are trying to have them doing the webinars in Skype for Business instead, and will make them more uh, manage on their own. It will, it will be more effective for the organization. But we still have the Skype uh, Adobe Connect if we need it. Uh, and we have YouTube for our webcasts. And also, if we record meetings, we have YouTube for, for distribute them. Distribute them. Uh, we work with internal meetings, of course, as I mentioned. Uh, other Swedish agencies and organizations, and there are, the REM project have been extremely valuable because we have had uh, this continuous discussion among the agencies. We have a meeting place for among the agencies to discuss eventual problem and to be able to solve them. Uh, so this have been a, really a success factor for virtual meeting in Sweden, I think. Um, uh, international projects, we uh, do that. And that depend, depends on the ability for the the persons in the, in the participating organization, if they are managed, but, but they often do. We try to help. So if we, when we start a project, we, we try to secure that we have the ability to have the meetings virtually for, for the project. And then uh, if that is a problem, we go in and help the, the individuals that have problems. Uh, and I think that's a good, good way to, to work. We're starting with the international training programs. We have had them for a long time. Uh, and um, uh, I'm actually starting that now to, to see if we can virtualize them more, uh, use virtual meeting more. And then you always have the problem with the connection with countries that don't have really uh, that build of infrastructure, that, that the infrastructure yet. But mostly it works. Um, you have done it with Russia, we've done it with Brazil, we've done it with India. Uh, and uh, we're looking into how we can elevate this work. And I think that's, that's a good way. Bengt, you need yes. to hurry up a little bit. Yes, okay, <clears throat> okay, 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 okay. Last, last uh, minute, Bengt. Yes. Mm. Um, uh, what we're planning to have more education. I think it's important that people learn from themselves or from their meetings, but we need to use, do education as well. Um, we improve, always improve the meeting infrastructure. We have it in every room, but we often look to, always look to find other ways to improve uh, the different meeting types with, with good technology. And uh, looking at a way to bend this 10 point program that REM have to a circle or a screw rather that we drill into better performance in a PDCA 
cycle to develop virtual meetings. That was all for me. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ulf and Bengt. Uh, it's always um, a challenge to come in as the last, last speakers in a, in a very interesting but cramped program uh, here because you get squeezed at the end here. But I think you made uh, made a good <clears throat> good presentations there. Um, Pontus, uh, let's go straight to it. What uh, what questions have we got for our presenters? There's been a little activity in the chat. Uh, Marlin and Søren has been discussing uh, virtual meetings and clients, bank clients, uh, and that's a very good way of using the chat. Uh, but we have a question to uh, Bengt from uh, Hilder from the Icelandic EPA. Uh, it would be interesting to hear a short explanation from Bengt on how virtual link workshops are carried out or an example of one? And I know that's a big question, but could you mm -hmm. shortly explain? Yeah, um, what you do is that to, to look at what you want to uh, do, really, what, what the outcome of your workshop, and look at how you can translate what you want to do in the workshop in a virtual way. Um, the most important thing is that uh, equality in the meeting it's not a very good thing to have a meeting where you uh, have a group in a room and give them uh, tools to work with physically in the room and have people outside the room that really can't participate on, on, on equal terms. So always try to find equality in the meeting. That's, that's I think, the key question. Um, uh, many times when you have workshops, perhaps, we had one last week about the forestry and um, it was more group discussions and the panel or, or common uh, large room discussion. So we went between virtual rooms of different sizes. It used Skype for Business and you had booked um, uh, group rooms as well. Uh, so they had their group room with perhaps 10 people and then went to the larger room to uh, explain what they have discussed. Um, many, many of the, also if you want to use uh, whiteboard, uh, use a whiteboard in the, mm -hmm. in the meeting. Um, many of the tools have whiteboards built into the Zoom have it, Skype for Business have it. Uh, I think WebEx and many of the others have as well. So, Thank, thanks, uh, Bengt. Uh, good explanation. We we should note also that uh, you're, you're talking about workshops. When it comes to larger conferences, there's some work being done now. There's being developed by several universities in Sweden. We had a actually the REM project had a webinar on that a couple of weeks ago, and I know that the this Swedish um, organization for IT development, uh, IT education, had a huge conference with 500 participants, which was a totally virtual conference just to test out and see how can you have fully virtual conferences, which is a really interesting development, not only for the educational sector, but uh, also for other organizations, uh, because the uh, conference traveling is a, is a large part uh, of, of um, both international uh, cooperation and uh, CO2 emissions. Um, uh, we have a question on uh, for uh, for Ulf. Uh, so you you talked very briefly on the red rem methodology and being referred to it. So, so what do you think is the most important part of that uh, rem methodology? If you should highlight something, <clears throat> it's, a, it's a complex question. But uh, the short answer is uh, perhaps that uh, you should not rely uh, only upon uh, Technology is so much good technology these days, but it's not enough. You have to work with the culture, the meeting culture, and let these things uh, go together. That's my short answer. And I would like to add that you also need, which has been mentioned before today, uh, the management support. Top management commitment has in two been ways. Yeah, reiterated by many, many here. Yeah. Uh, two yeah. ways. Uh, first, they need to go lead by example, and second, they need to uh, allocate resources to to work with this in the organization. And yeah. one more thing, perhaps. Uh, 
since we are all driven by feelings, it's very important to stress, as I think I did in my short presentation, that we are not enemies to the meeting, physical meetings. You have to, to explain that in a very early stage, always, because otherwise people won't listen, because people want to travel. So do I, so do all of us, but not every time. That's very important. I think this handles uh, the questions from Vera in the chat that uh, was put to all the uh, uh, presentations, but uh, pre presenters. But uh, but this was, I think, a hope question uh, answers for you, Vera. Hmm. Okay, Peter. Yeah. So, but uh, <clears throat> we're an international group here today, and we're talking about uh, international cooperation. And uh, you were touching upon that. Uh, I think what, what you mentioned is quite interesting that say you, you're supporting the individuals, I guess, as I interpreted, both locally at the, this Swedish EPA, but also that you're reaching out to your partners, let's say, uh, um, hypothetically, in, in Brussels that are not so used to doing this. How, how do you do that and how is that received? Uh, we have done it in a couple of different ways. We have the IED directive in civil uh, that our Swedish delegates in their planning meeting said that we can't travel to Seville all this much. It, it's a very heavy project. And um, uh, so we need to start working with virtual meetings. And they invited us and, and we, we helped them start it and they started immediately in doing that uh, and that was the it's it's the way that rem project do as well when they ask um but often when we have a smaller project we have a, a nordic council project a foot environment footprint project that i was invited to uh, an early stage just to uh, help them start working virtually and we had a, a, a starting meeting where we didn't have a heavy agenda, but could focus on trying out and, and making things work. And we found a few delegates that weren't able really to connect and had problems. So I could book a new meeting with them personally and we could solve their problems. Sometimes we maybe need to involve IT department uh, on their side, but many, very often it's just in a cool, soft environment, explain and try and play together and then it will work fine. And then the project can work uh, in a good way after that. So don't start with the, 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 the heavy stuff in the project, start to secure uh, the meetings before. Thanks for that advice there. Uh, Pontus? Uh, I have a question from the chat from Vera from Diggy Nord. Uh, and she touches on something that we have all experienced or uh, that you, you see a conference that you would like to participate in. And, uh, maybe, and often it could be about the things that we are discussing now, but it's not possible to, to be a part of it if you don't travel to sit in the room. Uh, so how can we push for... Uh, for, for those kind of meetings to be more also offer uh, the virtual alternative. Thanks. I think that that management, our management, I, I always ask our management at the Swedish Environment Protection Agency, and I think they actually have catched that, that uh, ball now, um, to be a driving force in, in their connection with leading uh, management in, in the projects or in EU or uh, DG environment, of course, in our case, um, asking for development of possibilities for virtual meetings. Uh, and I think this has to be on that level. We have to rise that that level that our management asks for this. Uh, so, uh, Peter? Yes, and maybe last uh, last question. Now we've been uh, we've had a, an actually exceptionally long virtual meeting. We usually don't have these long uh, long virtual meetings here uh, with one hour and forty five soon uh, one hour forty five minutes. How do you min maintain concentration and enthusiasm in in these uh, kind of meetings? So, who would like to answer uh, that? 
How about you, Søren? Yes, yeah, as I, as I told, you can hear me? Yes. yes. Great. Um, yeah, I was, as I was mentioned, um, we are using uh, different instruments. We are making poles, uh, as I heard you were telling about earlier, Peter. Um, we are also using um, the, the quiz, the Socrative quiz, and um, a Dementimeter, so, so make people um, deliver information and discussions into the meeting so it's not one to many it's more like um yeah that you are including them uh, into the webinars or into the meetings uh, as also the chat is a function that we are using a lot so that's my ideas and any other uh, tips or ideas on uh, on that just agree i agree and Peter, we only have one and a half minute left. And before you make a summary, I would just like to comment that we, we had the question about security that we didn't have time to, to discuss more now, but, but that is a big question. And how to, what kind of meetings can you conduct in this way uh, in, a, in a security perspective uh, that we need to come back to? But uh, we didn't forget, but we need to push, push it ahead of us. Yes. Well, one of the uh, one of the things before we close down, uh, Selvan said, well, uh, you need to engage the uh, uh, the participants. So we would like to see uh, part of this would be to uh, to have a small poll. That was one of the uh, suggestions by uh, Selvan, and we try to learn here. So here's a uh, a quick survey. If you found for you, those of you who have been attending. Did you find this? Uh, this um, isn't it okay also for the panelists to answer? I don't think that they can actually. So no, we can't. Okay. So no, we can. You can. Like. I can, but <laughs> I won't then. <laughs> so excellent. Thank you very much for um, for voting there, and uh, I would like to thank you all before we close this this webinar. Thank you very much, all panelists, all presenters, for really interesting, good presentations, for a good discussion, uh, also uh, all participants for all your input when it comes to to the chat for uh, for coming here and for. Uh, for uh, attending here and uh, bringing this uh, discussion and raising the issues here. I also would like to, to naturally uh, thank the Nordic Council of Ministers who have actually made this possible uh, here. And uh, not least uh, Vera, Molin and uh, Alice. Vera and uh, Molin who has been working and contacted many of you before and done much of the background research and uh, the summary for uh, for the Digi Nord and continue to work uh, with this. And Alice Dostan from the Swedish Transport Administration who has been facilitating this. So thank you very much all of you who made this possible here. And uh, with that, I would uh, like to say uh, hey do and to be continued. Now we will actually, I can tell you all, we will uh, have a lunch and after lunch we will actually meet and sit down and think how can we uh, uh, take on all those challenges that we've been discussing now and the opportunities to collaborate and what kind of advice can we bring forward to the Nordic Council of Ministers and our policy leaders. Thank you very much. And now I will stop the recording.